video four of chapter two, we are going to continue our discussion on normal distribution calculations, but when we can't specifically use the empirical rule or the 6895-99.7 rule. So we had this question at towards the end of video three that said, what percent of values are between 1,000 and 1,100? And we could try to use the empirical rule because we know on to the left of the mean, one standard deviation down, should be half of 68%. And on the right side of the 68% from the mean downward should be another 34%. But we said we couldn't just cut that 34 and half and call this 17% and 17%. Because this first region here has more area, has a higher uh, height region to it than, say, this second half does. So we know that the area of this first region should be greater than 17%, and the area of the second kind of half region from 1100 to 1200 really needs to be less than 17%. So we're going to talk about how do we get those exact numbers with our calculator. So where we're going to go in your calculator is press the second key and then the variables button, which is down by the down arrow keypad, because we want to get to distributions and we want to focus our attention on the normal distribution. Now your first two options are both normal things, but one says PDF and one says CDF. We will never use normal PDF. Um, I don't think I've ever once used normal PDF. You could use normal PDF twice to do the same thing as normal CDF does, so that's why we're always just going to use normal CDF. Now, once you have selected normal CDF, now, it really depends on if you have a newer TI calculator or an older TI calculator. If you've got an older calculator, then this is what you will see after you select normal CDF. And you're going to need to know how many numbers you need to put into normal CDF and in what particular order. Now, what seems maybe unfair is for the people with newer calculators, it gives them this nice menu here. And it tells you how many values you need and what values they represent. So let's talk about the next part. And then regardless if you have a newer or an older calculator, you will still need to show me, and really this is also required on the AP exam, how much work you would need to show to get full credit. All right, so here is a picture illustrating what we currently have. We have a mean of 1,000. We were wanting to know the percentage of scores between 1,000 and 1,100. So on my graph, I have the mean in the middle at 1,000, and I've labeled it such. And here's my value of 1100, and I've shaded, I've highlighted, but you should shade with your pencil or pen, this particular region between 1000 and 1100, because that is our area of interest. Now, off to the side over here, I wrote what the standard deviation is to know that that belongs to this distribution. Now, you could also um, kind of draw out three standard deviations above and below the mean, to illustrate, and you could even label them 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, and 800, 600, 400, or really I think it's just quicker and easier. I didn't mean to erase part of my normal distribution there. Um, I think it's just easier just to label what the standard deviation is. All right, so the lower, what this means, and for your older calculator people, this is the first number you're going to be typing in, is what's going to be called the lower bound. And the lower bound represents what is the furthest left point that represents our shaded region. So the furthest left value of our shaded region in this case is 1000. So if you've got the newer calculator, you're going to type in 1000. Now there might have already been something there like negative 1 E99. You just need to write over that 1000. For your older calculator people, you just need to type in 1000. But then your older calculator people, you need to put in a comma after the 1000. And if you look above the 7 button on your calculator, there's where you'll find a comma. All right, the upper now represents the furthest right portion of our shaded region, which in this case, the furthest right region is the 1100. So newer calculator people, you're going to type in 1100. Older calculator people, after your comma, and this is where I'm going to kind of run out of room here, but you would type in 1100 and then put in a comma. Next, newer calculator people, it's asking for the mean. And the mean in this problem was 1,000. So type in 1,000. Older calculator people, 
put in a thousand after year 1100 and then a comma. And then last but not least, the standard deviation. So newer calculator people, you type in 200. Older calculator people, you type in 200 and then put an end parenthesis. Now your newer calculator people, you can go down and press paste and then what you'll see is what the newer or is what the older calculator people will have typed in. So you will see the same thing eventually in the end regardless if you have a newer or older calculator. So when you press enter in the end to do this calculation, you should get and I'll do this to four sig figs point 0. 0.1915 so that means the area, what percentage of values are between 1,000 and 1,100, about 19%, 19.15%. All right. Now, ideally, I would love to see a picture here that illustrates that you understand the region that is being asked for in the problem. And it also lets me know you understand where the mean belongs, and you know or at least label um, or draw in your picture how much standard deviations are worth. But again, it's not entirely required that you draw in three standard deviations above and below the mean. If I simply just say, here's what the standard deviation is, that is kind of the minimum work, if you will. Now, what I also would tell you to do is it is acceptable to write out the calculator command as part of your work. So if I had a thousand and 1100, and then 1000, and then 200. That was really the calculator command in the end that gave us this 19.15%. What I would also need you to do is label appropriately what these values represent. So I'm going to do LB for lower bound. The 1100, I'm going to call that my UB or my upper bound. The second 1000 here was really the mean, and the 200 was the standard deviation. Now, is it entirely necessary that you show me this if you've already drawn me a picture that fully illustrates what the calculator command is finding? And that answer would be, no, you don't have to do both. So what I'm telling you is you either need to draw an appropriate labeled picture showing the shaded region that represents the answer of 0.1915, or you can type out the calculator command with the appropriate values and labeling such values. Again, you must label them if you're not going to draw a picture. Now, which method would I personally prefer as, a, as an AP stats teacher? I would be thrilled with more of this approach. Because if you were illustrating to me, you understand what a normal distribution is, where the mean is located, what region you are interested in, and you can still find that answer, and it seems reasonable that this would be about 20% of the curve, then that really shows me more um, of your understanding of the content. If you just write out the calculator command and get the answer, then yes, you got the answer, you labeled everything appropriately, but I don't know, I can't see necessarily um, that you really understand the material here. So again, either or, appropriate labeled picture, or write out the calculator command and label everything appropriately. All right, so let's try a different problem here. So we're not talking uh, scores anymore, but it says what percent of values are between Z scores of negative 1.5 and 1.5? Now, Z scores came from a standard normal distribution, and a standard normal distribution had a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So if I wanted to draw an appropriate picture, the mean would be in the middle, which is zero, and then my standard deviations, if I already have those kind of markings down here to help guide me, I mean, this would be Z scores of one, two, three, and negative one, negative two, and negative three. Now again, you don't have to label the standard deviations. You could simply just come over here to the side and say, for this normal distribution over here, the standard deviation is worth one. But you still need to label appropriately where the mean is located and what value it has, all right? Now, if I had z-scores of negative 1.5 and positive 1.5, the negative 1.5 z-score means I am one and a half standard deviations below the mean. So I'm just gonna go in between my negative one and negative two, and I'm gonna write down here, here's negative 1.5. And then I'm gonna go up to positive 1.5, 
and draw in that value and label it such. And now where would I shade? That would be all of this particular region between negative 1.5 and positive 1.5. This is the area that I need to figure out. So now if I just think of my calculator command here, because this is what's going to give me the answer in the end. The picture, this is kind of visual work here that represents, hey, when I do the calculator command, that number that it tells me represents this shaded region. So my lower bound is my farthest lowest shaded region, which is that negative 1.5. The upper bound, and I'm going to go ahead and label appropriately as well, uh, the upper bound stops at positive 1.5. So there's my upper bound. And then the mean and the standard deviation were 0 and 1, respectively, because z-scores only come from standard normal distributions. So once I type that into my calculator, I should get an answer that is approximately to four significant digits, 0.8664. And does it seem reasonable that this would be about 86% of our values? And yeah, I think that looks like kind of a reasonable number if this thing's truly drawn to scale. So there's our answer. All right, next problem. So we're going to go back to the SAT scores. Um, so now, assume scores follow a normal distribution with a mean of 1,000, standard deviation 200. What percent of scores are below 1,350? So first thing I would do, draw a normal curve, label the mean in the middle. Mean is 1,000. And where would I find 1,350? Well, they would have to be above the mean. How far above the mean? Well, 1,200 would be one standard deviation above. 1,400 would be two standard deviations above. So 1,350 is just going to be a smidge under two standard deviations. Just approximate it. So we'll just put it right here. Now, what percent of scores are below 1,350? Well, I'm starting at 1,350, and I am shading everything below 1,350. So this goes all the way down to the farthest left region. Now, how many standard deviations does that get shaded down to the left? Theoretically, I mean, infinitely many standard deviations down this way. But there's really only so many standard deviations we could go to the left before we would hit a score of zero, because I doubt there can be negative scores on the SAT. So that's the next thing we're going to have to discuss, is when we get to the normal CDF command here, what do we call the lower bound? Where does this thing really stop? Well, if you said zero, that would make appropriate sense here. But we're just going to assume theoretically this thing just keeps going on and on and on towards negative infinity. But the problem is you can't type in negative infinity into your calculator. So we're going to do the next best thing. We're going to use negative and make sure you press the negative key, which is uh, below the three. Don't type in the minus sign because then it'll give you an error. So the next best thing to negative infinity is negative 99999. Just type in a bunch of nines. Four or five nines, that's enough standard deviations down that represents really far down the road. Okay, so there's our lower bound. Now, if you wanted to, you could type into your calculator negative 9999, but you could write out as your work, really the lower bound theoretically is negative infinity. And that would be fine. You would just need to remember, I need to type in negative 99999 in my calculator. So I'll just leave the negative infinity here. Now the upper bound stops at the 1350. So 1350 upper bound. And then next has to be the mean, which was 1000. And then standard deviation, which was our 200. So now if I press enter and let the calculator do its work there, I should get an answer to four significant digits of 0.9599, so almost 96%. And does that seem reasonable, that all of this region is 96% roughly of the entire area? Some people might go, well, it looks doesn't really look like that'd be 4%, but it's fairly reasonable that this is 96% of the total curve. All right, so there's our final answer again. Now, in terms of work, you can show me this, or you can show me an appropriate labeled picture, and then the only other thing that I didn't include was uh, identifying what the standard deviation was. So if I showed this, 
with the answer? I mean, absolutely, I need to know what the final answer is. What is that shaded region? How much area is it? So absolutely this, but with it, the calculator command with appropriate labeled parameters, or draw me a picture that shows that negative infinity is the lower bound, 1350 is the upper bound, with a mean of 1,000 and a standard deviation of 200. So this is kind of visual work, and then here's technological work. All right, now what percent of scores are greater than 1215 with our same scenario here? So 1215, first let me label my mean in the middle of 1,000. 1215 would be just a smidge above one standard deviation, right? Because one standard deviation above would be 1,200. So 1215, I'm just going to put it slightly above one standard deviation here. And I'll label that as my score, nope, not 1,200, as 1215. And the question was, what percent of scores are greater than 1215? So I'm going to start at 1215 and shade to the right, because all these scores would be greater than 1215. So now when we get to our normal CDF command, and again, if I want to show some visual work, let me label that my standard deviation is 200 over here. So the lower bound, the furthest left shaded region, is the 1215. And label that LB. Now, how far does it theoretically go down to the right? I mean, really, to positive infinity. Now, really, the SAT scores max out at 1,600. So if you put 1,600 here, you are kind of doing more of an, uh, an applicable uh, upper bound. But we're still going to go theoretical. So you can put infinity as the upper bound. But really, what you're going to have to type into your calculator is a bunch of nines. So we're going to go positive 99999. Don't put in too many nines. Uh, we found out over the years that if you put in too many nines, it kind of screws with the calculator and it doesn't quite know what to do with so many nines. All right. Nope, too far, too far. Let's keep our infinity upper bound and then the mean, 1,000. And then the standard deviation, 200. And so once I press enter for that, to four significant digits, I should get a little over 14%. So this shaded region represents about 14% of the total normal distribution. So now I want you guys to try this particular problem. What percent of scores are between 800 and 1400? And I'm going to give you a hint here. There's two different ways to do this problem. You can use normal CDF now that you know all about normal CDF, but there's something special about the values of, eight, of 800 and 1400 because there are so many standard deviations below and above the mean. So there's where two possible answers could be calculated from. And either answer would be 100% correct on the AP exam. So we'll discuss those possibilities tomorrow in class.